Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys some landscape painting tips and take you through my entire process for creating a landscape painting. I'm using a photo reference for this piece, but I'm not copying it as it is. I'm mostly using it as a guide for choosing my colors and to guide the overall composition. Don't be afraid to use reference when painting, even if you're painting from imagination. There's nothing wrong with it. And in fact, it's something that most professional artists will recommend that you do. So the first thing I like to do is create a few thumbnail sketches. These are very, very small and very quick sketches that have two purposes. One is to warm you up and get your creativity going for the actual sketch. And two is to help you come up with different variations of your composition. Once you feel like you have one that looks good, you can go ahead and blow it out to a full size sketch. In this case, I actually liked elements of the last two. So I combined those and I put them together in the sketch that I put down on the sketchbook. When I draw out the sketch, I'm only focusing on getting a general feel for the scene and drawing out the major shapes and the masses. I'm not drawing any textures or foliage or small details because I know that the paint will cover it up pretty quickly. So there's really no point in creating a super detailed line drawing if it's just going to get painted over in the first five minutes of the process. Next comes the blocking stage where I essentially fill in those shapes with color. I'm using watered down gouache so that way I can see the sketch underneath and I'm not worried about nailing my colors or my values at this stage. I just want to put down a rough idea of what those colors and values will be but I know that I'll have time to adjust them later. I'm also not worrying about any kind of details which is why I'm sticking with a fairly large flat brush that keeps me from painting too small even if I try to. I'm sticking with an overall color for pretty much everything in the scene. The trees on the left are just a basic brown, the foliage in the background is just an overall green, the stones, the rocks in the center are just a warmish gray. I'm not adding too much color variation, I'm not adding any details or shadows at this point. But once I feel like that's pretty much done, then I can start indicating more of the lighting in the scene. I know that it's coming from the left for the most part, so the shadows will generally be on the right side of trees and rocks and everything else. I'm also constantly keeping in mind the quality and type of lighting that I'm dealing with. The tree in the foreground, for example, is being hit directly by some dappled light, but everything else is just catching diffused light. That means that the rocks, the foam in the little waterfalls, and the shaded foliage will take on some of the blue-greenish tones from the sky and the surrounding trees. It also means that the shadows will be pretty soft without any hard edges. I can then start using slightly more opaque paint to just fill in the underlying watered-down gouache and start to get my colors and values closer to what they will look like in the end. And I'm starting to reinforce, as I said before, the, the lighting effects. I'm adding some reflected light from the sky on the, the rocks, which makes them look a little bluish. It's a kind of a bluish green. But once again, once I feel like that's done for the most part, I can move on to the next stage, which is adding some foliage to the background. It's nearly impossible to replicate every detail in nature. And for the most part, it's really not necessary to do it either. Simplifying and indicating those details is honestly one of the most important things to learn when it comes to painting landscapes, but unfortunately it's also one of the hardest ones to do. It just really takes time and experience, so just keep at it and do master studies. Those help. You can see how other artists do that and just kind of copy from them. I like to use split brush and dry brush techniques to help me sort of scribble in those details. I also make sure to squint and step back from the painting every now and then always keeping my eyes on the focal point of the scene, because if everything else still looks believable when you do that, then you're probably on the right track. Just like with lighting, you should always be aware of your values and keep them grouped together. Values deserve their own video. There's a lot to talk about 
when it comes to them, but I'll try to break down what I mean by grouping values in just a few words. So a general rule of thumb is that things get lighter in value as they recede into the background because of atmospheric perspective. So you'll usually have a light value for the background, a middle value for the middle ground, and a darker value for the foreground. That's the overall value of those parts of the scene. But each of those areas will have their own shadows, their own midtones, and highlights. What grouping your values mean is making sure that the shadows, midtones, and highlights of each area are darker or brighter only in relation to their surroundings. That's why the highlights on the rocks in the middle ground are still a lot darker than even the darkest parts of the background. It's, it's a complicated concept, so definitely try to look into it more if you're struggling with them and just practice them by doing value studies and that kind of stuff. At this point, I can start refining things a little bit more. That means adding more color, more color variation, more detail, more contrast, more lighting, more of everything, really. I'm working mostly around my focal point because I want to make sure that that looks right, that the values and the lighting in there are the way I want them to be. That's the area that will have the most details and the most contrast, while everything else around it will gradually fall more and more out of focus, so to speak, so that it won't compete for attention with a part of the scene that I want people to actually focus on. I add more contrast by darkening the darkest darks, by adding more highlights to the rocks. I'm adding more color in the form of reflected light on those rocks and just generally focus on refining this general area, which is my, it's my subject really. At this point, I switch to a smaller round brush to, again, put in some smaller details in, in and around my focal point and my subject, which is the little waterfalls and the rocks. I stuck with a flat brush up until this point because I didn't want to start doing this too early. I wanted to get the major shapes and the major colors locked in, and then I could move on and start worrying about the smaller details. I can then start to add more layers of foliage to the background to add to the sense of depth. As I said before, things get darker the closer they are to the foreground, so I'm keeping that in mind as I add more and more leaves and trees in the back. I don't want them to steal attention from the waterfall, so I'm avoiding dramatic changes in color, contrast, or adding too many details. And as with everything else, I'm working from back to front because it's the easiest way to go about it. I just paint a layer of trees and leaves, I wait for it to dry, and then I add another layer on top, wait for that one to dry, add another one on top until I'm satisfied and I feel like I have something that looks right. I can finally start to refine the right and left side of the scene, which I've mostly left alone for up until this point. I know that, again, they're not gonna be the focal point, and in the case of what's on the right, it's gonna be covered up by a tree. So I'm not trying to make it look perfect. I just wanna add more texture, add a little bit more detail, but without taking attention away from my main subject. This tree on the right side 
wasn't actually in my photo reference that I used, but I put it in to help with the composition. This is something you can and should do even when painting a real life scene. You can move things around, you can change their size, or you can even take them out completely if they don't help the composition. In this case, I felt it was a nice way to frame the painting and balance the two trees on the left. It also helps adding depth because it's overlapping some of the stuff in the background and the branches act as leading lines that direct the viewer's eye into the composition. The same goes for the grass near the bottom. It's another thing that I added just to help frame the whole piece and again to draw attention away from the edges and towards the main subject. At this point the painting is basically finished so I decided to take a short break to sort of let my eyes rest, forget about what the painting looks like and go back at it with fresh eyes um, and then I can start adding the last few details. I decided to darken some of the areas in the center of the painting to make things pop a little bit more. I decided to add a little bit more foliage, um, a little bit more reflected light here and there. This, this is just stuff that's not fully necessary, but it just helps. I also decided to add an extra tree in the middle there because I felt it was a little too empty. And again, just like the tree in the foreground because it helps selling that sense of depth because it's overlapping whatever is in the background. And then at the very end, I can finally add in just a few of the brightest brights in the form of that light streaming through the trees in the back, which not only does it just add little elements of interest, but it also sells the fact that, you know, there's a whole world past those trees. And that's pretty much it. You can see that when looking at it up close, it's not a super realistic painting. You can see brush strokes, random textures, the details aren't very detailed, but when looking at it as a whole piece, it looks fine. And that's really my only goal when painting because people are not gonna be looking at it too close. Most paintings you're gonna be looking at from at least a foot away. Sometimes you might get close to them, but as long as they read and they look believable from a certain distance, I'd say you've achieved your goal. I hope you guys found this helpful or inspiring or entertaining at least. And if you have any questions about what I went over, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to reply. Of course, there's a lot more to painting landscapes. So I will be making more videos like this to talk about different techniques and whatnot. And if you'd like to vote on future videos, you can join my Patreon and help me choose what to cover next. And if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more, you can like it, subscribe, and I will see you next time.